Hey there, I'm Jeff with Heart Music, and I'm going to talk to you today about the trumpet. So, a little review. The trumpet comes in two parts, the mouthpiece and then the rest of the instrument. When we want to play, all we got to do is put the mouthpiece in, right? Uh, I'm sure your band directors have talked to you about the different parts and the way things work with it. The only thing that I'm going to review with you for that now is that when we want to oil our valves, you unscrew this part right here, pull it up, take it out, and you want to apply, apply oil to this section right here, the bottom part. You don't need to put oil on this top part, just the bottom part. And then when you're done, put it back in, let it fall in there like that, give a little twist, make sure that it sits in the valve in the right place, and then screw that part back in, making sure that it's in the right way. If you accidentally put it in backwards, you're gonna go to play and no air will move, no sound will come out. So if you encounter that and you think, why can I not make a noise with my trumpet? It's probably because the valves are in the wrong direction. So just make sure that those are all facing the right way. Okay, now we'll move on to how do we hold the instrument. Obviously we have to use both hands, so first I'm gonna talk about the left hand. There's two basic ways that you can hold the instrument, and it's really up to you whichever one is most comfortable. Um, typically I tell people to hold it like this. So here it is from this, both sides. We'll put our thumb through this thumb ring right here, and our third finger goes through this ring right here. On your student models, this ring is adjustable. So if you find that this is too far away for you to put your third finger through, you can unscrew and then move it closer or farther away depending upon what you need to do. In this way, a lot of the weight of the trumpet will be balancing right here up on our first finger, up on our first knuckle almost. So you don't have to really squeeze at all. It's more about just kind of, it just kind of sits there pretty comfortably, right? Otherwise, another way that I would say is this, we kind of call this like a trigger grip or something like that. You'll have your two fingers down here and then you'll put your middle finger through the, the ring on the third valve slot. Still, the thumb goes in this ring here on the first slot, right? Those are the two ways that I would, that I typically teach somebody to hold the instrument. Those are the two most common ways and probably the two um, best ways in terms of, you know, how your hand and your arm and your shoulder, it all goes together. They're the least, they're the least um, straining ways to hold the instrument. So you can decide which works best for you. There is no right or wrong um, between the two. Just whatever is most comfortable. And Seeing as you know, you are all beginners and very young, your bodies are gonna grow and change. So something that might be more comfortable now might be less comfortable later. So keep that in mind. As, as you grow and get better at the instrument, you might find that some other way is more comfortable and that's okay too. Now, with the right hand, basically, we know that the fingers have to go on top of the buttons, right? So again, there's a couple of options. The thumb, I put my thumb right here underneath what we call the lead pipe, this section right here. I put it right there. Some people put it in here, next to the valves on the lead pipe, underneath the lead pipe. You can do either one, again. We just wanna make sure we don't have it way through like this, then you're gonna be holding it kinda of weird. Just kinda of put the, the pad of your thumb right in there, very comfortably, again, it doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to put a lot of force in there. You put your fingers on there, and then we have this pinky ring right here. And there's two options for that. You can either put your finger in the ring, which is what I do, or you can put your finger up on top of the ring, which is what other people do, and then just let it rest there. You don't have to press down, you can just let it sit there. It's, it's a very simple, very comfortable position. Again, whatever you find to be the most comfortable is what will be best. Um, and yeah, so next let's move on to actually making sound on the instrument. Obviously we use our lips to make sound. We call this the embouchure, right? So, 
This may seem more complicated than it actually is. Making an embouchure is very simple. I want you all to just sit there, put your lips together like they normally are if you were not making an expression, and then that's pretty much it. You'll see that when I make an embouchure, this is where I start, and then I just kind of do this a little bit. You see the difference? There I am normally. Now here I go to make an embouchure. So I open up a little space here in the center of my lips, and you'll see that I just bring my corners of my lips back ever so slightly. Okay? But again, I usually make that adjustment once I've put the horn up to my face. Right? So, it's not that complicated. Don't stress out about it too much. The thing is that everybody's body is different. Everybody's lips are different. Everybody's mouth is different. Everyone's teeth are different. So, the way that you play, the way that you find to make your sound come out the best is going to be individual to you. What I'm trying to advocate is that we want our lips to be in as natural a position as possible. If you find yourself doing weird stuff like rolling them in or going over to the side or throwing them out, we don't want to do that. As close to a normal resting position as possible as you can get is going to lead to the best results because then the less energy you have to spend on making some crazy ooh, shape or something like that, the more you can spend It'll just be there. We want to use these muscles not to do lots of heavy lifting, but just a little bit of maintaining the position of our lips, right? If you find yourself squeezing your lips together a lot or having them too far open or something like that, those are all going to make it more difficult for you to make sound. Again, as naturally together as possible. And then just a little bit of, mm, right? So I would say this, put your lips together, put the horn up, take a breath, and see what happens. Your sound might sound like this. Or this. Or this. Right? But the point is, we want to turn air into vibration. And that won't happen if our lips are too squeezed together or too far apart. Right? So you have to experiment a little bit and find the best place where the most air can turn into the most amount of vibration. Um, if you wanted to think of like having a little tiny straw coming out of your lips. That's about the size of the hole that you need to look at the air through. Remember, we're blowing air through this hole, so it, we, don't, we can't have our lips wide open or completely closed, right? We wanna blow air through the lips, not into the lips, right? They need to be a doorway that are somewhat open, not a wall, all right? So, like I said, it will take some experimentation. It will take some practice. It's gonna take some frustration also. There's gonna be moments where you're not gonna be able to get the sound that you want, and that's totally okay. Brass instruments especially are some of the more difficult instruments when you're starting out, just in terms of getting used to making the sound because it's such a foreign experience for us. So don't get frustrated, don't be discouraged, it just takes a little bit of experimentation. And the good thing is that that means that you can figure out a lot of stuff on your own. You can figure out a lot of things just by sitting in your room and trying to make the sound better, trying to make the sound more in tune, trying to make it sound, make it feel easier. All of those things, right? So like I said, don't be discouraged. View this as a fun opportunity to experiment to see what's the, what can I do to make this sound great and feel excellent right um and you'll get there either eventually some people get sound right away other people it takes a couple of weeks of trying to find the way the right way to to produce sound on the instrument and there, there's nothing wrong with that it happens to every everybody has their diff, a different experience with it and there's nothing to worry about with that so again put your lips together as comfortably as possible put the horn to your face Breathe and play. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is breath. Um, we basically, playing the instrument is only about two things, our lips and our air. Now, when you go out and you run around, you might find yourself breathing like this. We don't want to take breaths like that when we play an instrument. 
when we play an instrument, we want to take deep, very full breaths. And let me see if you can hear the difference between these two. Here's a shallow breath. We don't want that. Here's a deep breath. Do you hear the difference? With a deep breath, I'm trying to fill, I'm imagining that I'm filling my lung, lungs up from the bottom. With a shallow breath, it's almost like we're filling them from the top, right? We're going this way. But with a deep breath, I'm trying to fill them from down here. So I go. Right? And I'm using a lot of these muscles to do the work. I want my shoulders to be relaxed and stay normal, stay as comfortable as possible. But I'm going to use that muscle that's right at the base of my rib cage called the diaphragm. And that is what expands and contracts our ribs to allow the air to really fill up our lungs all the way, right? So listen again. Now, did you hear that when I exhaled, I had a consistent air stream, right? I don't go or right? When we play, we want to have a very even amount of air flowing the entire time so that from when we start playing to when we finish playing, it's about the same amount and the same speed, right? And now the speed varies depending upon which note we want to play, right? But for example, just to illustrate, I'm going to play a long tone. And this is what we want to go for in terms of the sound and the quality of the air. Consistency and the same from the beginning to the end. Now, I am a full grown man. My lung capacity is gonna be a lot bigger than most of yours. So don't worry if you can't play for that long. If you need to take a breath, take a breath. That's the important thing right now as you're learning to play is that you always have enough air to feed into the instrument to create the best sound. If you need to breathe every four beats, that's okay. It's more important that you breathe fully every time and are able to really fill up this horn as if it was a balloon. We wanna fill up every part of this horn with air that's all moving forward, right? I like to think that I'm sending my air to the other side of the room when I go to play. All right, I'm sending that sound, I'm sending the air across the room and that's what gives us a better sound and a brighter sound, a more, a more uh, projecting sound and that's what we really wanna go for. The other thing I'll say is that just, I like to use a sports analogy here a lot. So we'll, we'll say that we're gonna kick a ball. When we go to kick a ball, we bring our leg back and then we swing it through. We don't bring our leg back and then wait, right? And then finally kick. No, it's a fluid motion of back and forth. Or if we're gonna hit a baseball, swing back, fly through, or a tennis ball, right? It's all about in and out. And the same thing is what we want with our air. We don't wanna go Because when we do that, we introduce tension into our body. All of a sudden we have to start using our muscles that are only really designed to go in and out. We have to use them to all of a sudden hold. And they don't wanna do that. And as they do that, they get harder and they get tighter and they get tighter. And that makes it more difficult to our, for us to efficiently let the air flow. So think of it always as a consistent in, in and out. I'll illustrate here, right? And most importantly is that we want to breathe in through our mouths. Don't only breathe in through your nose. And this is also a difficult thing to get used to is that you have to get used to breathing in and then getting set and ready to play, right? But again, I promise you, in a week or two weeks of practicing, it will feel comfortable, it will feel normal, and you'll be making sound and you'll be playing efficiently um, in no time. Really quick, let's talk about some good first notes. The note that I've been playing this whole time is a G. Not pushing any valves down, it's a G. But another note that you're probably gonna learn first is a C. It's lower than a G, but it also doesn't use any vowels. 
So for now, after your first initial lessons, maybe you've just got the trumpet, just practice trying to make a C come out. And if you can get that sound with the right pitch, try to make it sound better. Try to make it feel easier. Always making sure that we're filling up with air and we have sitting up straight with a nice posture, but a relaxed posture, not a tight one, right? <laughs> That's a great place to start. As soon as you start getting sound on the instrument, you look in your band books, you can start learning new notes. You know, it's all about the air speed. The higher we play, the faster we want the air, but we don't need to adjust our lips really that much. The goal with them is to maintain the embouchure that will produce the best sound. And then with our air and with the valves, we can play higher and lower. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope uh, it helps you experience some success on the trumpet and happy playing.